When objective personality came out with their theories, they were immediately met with a huge influx of new viewers and new subscribers. And of course, why wouldn't they? Dave Superpowers had a good reputation in the community and they came out with some pretty aggressive claims, claiming to have proven and defined a completely objective and scientific method of validating personality type and a model and a method to, with 100% certainty, determine your personality type, right? And objective personality were, in the beginning, highly liked and highly appreciated. But lately that has changed. And if you look at their statistics on, for example, their YouTube channel, you can see about a 70% drop in viewership. And today, last month, they didn't even gain subscribers, right? So what we're seeing is objective personality starting to lose their interest. And now the question is, why did they not succeed? What went wrong? And how come they struggled to gain long-term traction and validation for their ideas. And to explain that, I want to tell you the story of a girl, let's call her Emma, who came to Objective Personality a couple of years back, curious to find out her personality type. Previously, she had always typed as INFJ, but after sending in her video and being a six-month subscriber, she gained the right to get her own personality type. And Objective Personality, they have this uh, operator model where they rely on two independent individuals to confirm your personality type and now according to their own admission they are supposed to then uh, do this method in secret and then independently approach this person with their personal type and because they have both arrived at the same answer there is going to be a high likelihood that their answer must be correct because how could two experts individually verify a result that in itself should speak to the accuracy of the model, right? Wrong. Actually, what ended up happening was something completely different. So Emma, she, kid, she got her result and it surprised her. She got the result ESTJ. And okay, beyond that, she got a wide range of different coins and a wide range of different traits and definitions and was categorized into one of these personality types. And she was immediately skeptical. She didn't really know if she really related to or agreed with what they said. She felt that their explanations were superficial and stereotypical. And she didn't really feel that their service had made her feel more understood. But when she approached the objective personality community to discuss her concerns, she was mostly met by ridicule. Most people just said, you're not refusing to see yourself. You're, you don't see yourself. You don't know yourself. They are experts. You have to trust the experts. The experts know and they are objective in their report. And you simply need to accept the type that you were given, right? However, she didn't. And a bit later into the future, she ended up sending in a new video to Objective Personality, but this time under a new name. And what happened will surprise you. Objective Personality ended up changing everything. And ultimately, she got the result ENFP instead. A complete different type than the ESTJ she had been given initially, with a completely different set of coins and priorities. Obviously, after getting this result, she was extremely perplexed and she sent a message. Do you not remember me? I sent in a video earlier. Did you not recognize me? Like, you gave me this type before and now you're saying this. What changed? And, of course, they uh, respond to this in honestly the best way they could have. They simply admitted that, yes, we might have made a mistake the first time, but we think this time we got it correct. And in the beginning, we didn't see this. But after looking at it, yes, I think this is your true type, right? So... Obviously, like they uh, also did the extra mile and they offered a, a refund and which is a completely good thing to do. And, you know, the truth is this could have happened to any expert in typology. The truth is I have not met a single expert that has not occasionally mistyped another person. It happens to the best of us. We're all human and most typologists and most experts are judging you solely based on a one hour video, which means they're not seeing the full context of your personality. They're seeing a snapshot of you and their mood, their personal biases and a lot of other factors might factor into this. And while an expert might be more reliable or less reliable, certainly they can all make mistakes. And of course, if you make a mistake like that and you end up realizing it, you should definitely refund the service because if your service was to give people a personnel type, and you gave them the wrong personnel type, well, most likely you made a mistake in your service, right? So 
then in that case a refund is a completely fair option to do. However, what made this so problematic is it caused a lot of people to have a lot of questions and a lot of doubt. Because if they had mistyped her, what was the chance that they had also mistyped other people? And over the past year, objective personality have been forced to go back and correct many of their guesses and assertions. And so their idea and their marketing of themselves as objective and 100% accurate has come a lot into question. And arguably there's a bit of a discrepancy here because if you look at their marketing, of course they're an objective model, but if you do look at their disclaimers, they do admit that actually we do make mistakes. We don't have scientific proof. We're not an objective model. And so you can see that the marketing version versus the fine print of the system is sometimes a bit <laughs> inconsistent. So we can see an ad campaign on YouTube where they are consistently presenting themselves as experts who are always correct and who are always right. And we can see a disclaimer and a footnote that says, actually, no, we don't know <laughs> and we're not sure. And you, by uh, approaching us for these services, you know and you're aware of the fact that actually what we said in our marketing campaign is not actually what we're <laughs> really doing. <laughs> so here's the conundrum which uh, caused a lot of doubt for the community. But there was also more factors that happened that made a lot of people question this system. And now it should be said that the objective personality model is not a classic MBTI model, right? Because the classic MBTI works with 16 personality types, while objective personality works with 512. Now, when you work with 512 types, you end up with a lot of problems. From a scientific point of view, suddenly instead of having to prove 16 things, now you have to prove 512 things, right? So when you work with more types and when you add more coins and more dichotomies and more traits to the stack that you're studying, suddenly the burden of evidence grows higher, right? So the more dichotomies that you create, <laughs> the greater the chance that uh, the greater amount of work is going to be necessary to basically prove and validate your theory. And at this point, objective personality themselves have said that they're not even interested in this in the first place. They're not really interested in the prospect of presenting anything scientific or doing any form of critical validation of their model. They're simply interested in formulating new coins and new dichotomies. And recently they went forward and also relaunched new social types, adding the possible amount of types that you can have to 2000. And here, a lot of people began to grow quickly frustrated because suddenly the burden of evidence had grown even higher and now people were starting to get a bit annoyed and they were starting to rightfully criticize objective personality of instead of critically validating their theories, simply adding more dichotomies to avoid the process of having to validate their theories. And here, suddenly, basically, these new types could be used to create inconsistencies and conflicts and paradoxes that would make the objective personality system even more difficult to prove or valid. And how is that possible? Let me explain it like this. When you work with four key dichotomies, like the classic MBTI, basically what you have to do is you have to compare introverts to extroverts, intuitives to sensors, feelers to thinkers, and judgers to perceivers. But now, what is the difference between being, say, a feeling type and an extrovert? And what's the difference between being a judging type and an extrovert? And what's the difference between being a perceiving type and an introvert, right? There is always a chance that people will confuse different traits with one another. Perhaps describing somebody as a perceiving type when actually they're introverts. And now, imagine you add even more dichotomies. A fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth dichotomy. What will end up happening is even greater chance of cross-correlation and confusion and ambiguity. And there is a big chance that you're creating these internally self-contradictory personnel types where you can say that, yes, you're an introvert, but you're actually a social introvert. And because you're a blast introvert, you're actually going to appear extroverted, right? And here, people end up in a situation where the test results and the personality results become basically unfalsifiable because how do we separate between the two and how do we measure them and how do we understand them? And so far, objective personality is somewhat lacking in falsifiable definitions. Say, for example, being masculine is being described as being pushy and shovey and being feminine is associated with being more soft. And then here, there's a problem. How do you measure that? What does that mean in practice? If I would put that in a group environment, what would I see? And what examples can you give me of this? And how can you understand this? And here's the biggest factor why objective personality failed and why they came to struggle so much. Basically, when they started out, 
because they had 512 types, it was rather easy for them to give some rather dramatic theories and ideas. Because when you have 512 types, and say you run a study on 1,000 people, you're going to end up with two types on average in each personality type. And now you can look at those two types and you can say, what do these two people have in common? Well, they're both redheads, they're both lesbians, or so on and so forth. So here a lot of people might end up stereotyping even more. And because these sample sizes are so small, it's very easy to find commonalities. The problem is when you start adding more people to these groupings, these commonalities start to disappear and things that you initially thought were a result of being a part of that personality type eventually end up becoming a lot more muddy. And because of this, you also see objective personality gradually becoming less and less extreme in their case claims. Basically, from going to saying that, well, if you have this type, you are most likely going to be, uh, for example, a plumber, <laughs> you know, at some point they end up in a situation where they're like, when you have this one of these 2,000 personnel types, there is a small or slightly increased chance that maybe you're going to be interested in that or that kind of career, right? And so suddenly everything changes on its end. And here, of course, interest in the system begins to decline because the value of finding out your personality type begins to drop because what is the purpose of knowing that? And if these commonalities are so small and if these differences are so yeah, uh, eventually, like the point and the purpose of studying the system begins to dwindle. And I'm not arguing that this means that objective personality is dead by any metric. The truth is, objective personality remains probably one of the most popular alternatives to the classic MBTI out there. And objective personality has developed a solid and loyal subscriber base, and they're most likely set for a long time forward something has got to change in order for them to regain some of the authority and status that they used to hold in the community and the respect that they used to have when they started out. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you all in the next